everyone and welcome back to Chubby Pug Yarn Podcast, episode 21. Today it's Thursday, uh, it's the 20th of August, uh, so recording late or early, <laughs> depending on how you want to see it. It's uh, two and a half weeks since I recorded last. I didn't plan for it <laughs> to be like that, but uh, that's how it happened. I'm back inside, and if you have been watching this before, you will probably uh, recognize this as my guest room. I usually record over there, uh, but I needed more light from the window since it's uh, afternoon or evening even here, so the sun. Uh, when I record uh, on Saturdays or Sundays, which I usually do, I record in the morning when the sun is coming in from this window, which I have in front of me. Uh, but in the afternoon, the sun is on the other side of the house, so I don't get so much good lighting. So I try out to record in here again, mostly because it's uh, the coolest room in the house. It's uh, crazingly hot outside. Uh, we didn't have any good weather this this summer, but now in August the weather has been blooming with sun and sun and more sun. Uh, I plan to to record both weekends, uh, but I didn't got any time over uh, time left, I should say. Uh, so I didn't have time, and but. That's just life, I guess. But I have some things to talk about, and I really want to record before I'm going away on a trip. So I figured uh, better to record today and get it, hopefully, get it published before I leave. Uh, and then I will not record on, on Sunday because I will be home late. Uh, so I'm just going away for the weekend. So I figured better to record today. So here I am. I hope you had a really nice time since the last time uh, you watched me. I have really been longing to record because I, I really miss talking to you guys. Uh, I know that there are several people watching me, so I'm not just talking to myself. Uh, so that's really nice. I hope that I have uh, succeeded with some picture or resolution uh, improvements. I hope it will work, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah, maybe I should get on with the knitting. I have some uh, finished objects, and if you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen these. Uh, there's uh, I follow so many people on Instagram, and about two weeks ago, uh, one uh, a Norwegian designer uh, who is uh, Strikke Silla on uh, Instagram, and is, uh, she have her designs uh, published on Ravelry uh, uh, under the name Tina Haglund, uh, with my very Swedish pronunciation, but never mind. She wanted test knitters for these uh, cute pants. Uh, so, a Jordbærbukse, uh, which is a strawberry pants, uh, translated. So this is uh, the size uh, 3 months that I test knit. Uh, and I chose to knit it in uh, a yarn from a Norwegian company called the Store Alpaca. And this is the yarn called Stark. Uh, and it's merino, alpaca and nylon, a mix. I'm not sure about the percentage, but a really nice yarn. Uh, she wrote in the, the mail that uh, when she knitted it herself, she knitted with on, with only alpaca, and the halo kind of uh, was too much, so the, the dots didn't work out well. So I took this merino and alpaca yarn, so I, I have a little bit of halo. But I have really nice clear dots. And then it's a knitted uh, string in the waist and 
ripping in the top and ripping in the bottom. So really really cute and I knitted it in nine or ten days so it was a really quick knit. That's one of the good things with baby knits, isn't it? And I also have another finished object that is uh, baby related, which I haven't uh, published on Instagram. Uh, because one of my uh, special off things needed to be tested. I will talk about it later. But I test knitted uh, a pair of socks um, with my scraps from the R9 Carlos yarn. So here is a pair of baby socks. Or I shouldn't say baby because we I knitted it uh, with uh, a description for 6 to 12 months but we figured they are quite big so they are probably not uh, for a baby, but maybe a baby with big feet or a toddler with small feet, maybe. But anyways, uh, I was really pleased with these. So I knitted this with 2.25 millimeter needles. I never learned if that's a zero in US size. I'm not sure, but 2.25 millimeters GPN. And uh, I actually tried some different techniques because in the description I used uh, it's from the same book that I knitted like uh, the Easter egg socks that I showed up I hope I showed a picture of it in the last episode uh, the tiny threads was it in the called yeah tiny threads uh, was the booklet with socks patterns for different gauge uh, by Joely uh, Caparco and this is the uh, toe up version. So first I did, as described in the pattern, with just a regular short row heel. Uh, I do have some problems with getting the wrap and turns to look neat and pretty. So I tried uh, the German short rows on this one. It looks quite okay on one side, but the other side looks quite messy. And also I got quite big holes on both sides of the heel, which I'm not used to. Uh, so maybe I need some more practice. But it was nice to try something else. Maybe I should do more uh, fish and lips kiss heel. I have only tried it once, so maybe I should try it uh, on my next pair. But yeah, a cute pair of baby socks, finished. And then I have a half finished object. Uh, it was almost half finished the last time I recorded. But here is the crazy first sock. This is the Shane's socks uh, by Mona Drage. I have needed one pair before, which I have talked about. And this is the start of the second pair. So one sock finished and it fits perfectly on my fiance. So he's really happy. He aren't he aren't convinced about the colours, but he always likes he always always wants to have my home knitted socks. So he takes all the socks even though he maybe is not like this crazy. And I knitted the first one, I finished it, and then I have made the ribbing for the second one. So, twisted rib in the start. And I really love how those stitches travel and prevent mm, flashing or pooling or whatever. And it gives a really nice look on the sock, and it fits really nice. It's just a regular uh, heel flap on these. So these I'm knitting on my Cubics. 
uh, Nick Pro or whatever you call them. So Cubics 2.5 millimeter, which are my usual go-to. And then I have one project that is almost done. Uh, it needs some assembling though. Uh, I showed you last time I had a, a stash enhancement. Also, uh, today, um, my stash enhancement uh, last time. I showed you yarn from Dancing Dog Dye Works. You may recall if you watched the last episode. Uh, Waltz Worsted, uh, 5 o'clock somewhere. Oak, uh, and Sunset Orange. And I wanted to knit a toy, and now I have almost knitted all the pieces for uh, the pattern Jerry the Musical Monkey uh, by Rebecca Danger, one of these amazing designers for knitted stuff, stuffies or toys, softies, I you say. So this is the body for my monkey. This is probably the front. So on this one uh, I got a lot of pooling but I don't mind it at all, I think it would be quite cool. And then I have, let's see, all the body pieces everywhere. I have a pair of feet and a pair of arms, a long tail. We've got like self striping, so it's quite cute. And tiny ears. So I have the last piece on my needles, which is uh, going to be the mouth. Uh, I really like the pattern, and there was a lot uh, of good notes to read. I looked like in the project pages. For helpful notes and uh, there was a lot of links on how to assemble it on the most uh, good looking way uh, so i have been saving some links so i can assemble it uh, i really really like the orange and blue combination and the green color is really really pretty uh, so i think it will be a really cute monkey this monkey though is named Sam, the psychedelic simian, on my project page because he's, he, he's into music but he wanted to be a bit different and he looks quite psychedelic if you ask me so yeah this will probably be finished tonight I hope or maybe tomorrow, we'll see I have it in my beautiful, beautiful bag from Naughty Gnome uh, with the orange inside and the cute horses and some squirrels. I really like this bag, so it's really nice and I have lots of room for all the toy pieces. And then I have uh, I have been trying to do some crochet. Uh, Wool Diaries had on Instagram um, the, for this week, so it will end tomorrow, uh, a sock blanket madness. So if you search for the hashtag sock blanket madness, you will see all the pretties. Uh, the point was to take a photo of your blanket. And post it with the hashtag and tell how many squares you had before and then have one week to crochet or uh, knit as many squares onto your blanket as possible so I gave it a try uh, the week is not over yet but I have been distracted with all the other pretties as always so but here is how my blanket looks now so I have, let's see, this is the end I have made this week, so I have crocheted five squares to my blanket uh, during almost one week. 
So it's a gift. It's a gift game from uh, Knitting with You. And then it's some cyborg craft room mini skein that I got, and another one from Knitting with You. Uh, and then it's some drops delight uh, from an. I knitted a shawl for my my mother-in-law. Don't remember, but I had some scraps, and then I have some uh, string theory colorworks. So the fractal uh, fractal zone. Uh, so this is not all the colors; it's only more color, but it's on another square. So yeah, five squares. Not too bad since I haven't been attaching any squares for several months, I think. It feels really nice when the blanket is so big that you can fold it. So, as for now, it's only like a lap blanket, but I want it to be really huge. So I need to get my crochet work on. But I'm thinking, is there anyone who would be interested in uh, exchanging mini skeins? Uh, because most minis I get are too are too much, so I get like four squares on the mini skein, and I would love to have an exchange if someone is interested. Just something mindless, sending some mini skeins to get something new. If you're interested, please comment on YouTube or on Reverie. I think it would be really nice if someone wanted to change uh, mini skeins with me that would be nice and on the spinning part i haven't been spinning <laughs> anything at all uh, our house is a uh, little bit weird because when it's hot outside it's really hot inside and when it's cold outside it's really cold inside so we change it quickly but it has been so hot that I have barely been able to stay inside. Uh, so I haven't been spinning since uh, my spinning wheel isn't like travel travel size. Uh, but hopefully I will do it more when it gets a little bit cooler. Uh, but I have been doing some cross stitch in my other cross section. So, the bento box of eternity is done. I got some really nice advice from Freda from Knitting With You podcast, thank you so much, on how to assemble uh, or finish up a cross stitch, because I have never done that before. So, let's see if I can show you all the glare. So, it's sushi pieces and chopsticks and oranges so I assume I'm really pleased with this so this is going to be a gift for a friend of mine uh, which is uh, she's having her birthday quite soon so this will be the gift for me and since I finished this I haven't had the time to start my donut box but I will probably bring, bring it, bring my donut box cross stitch uh, on my travels this weekend. But I have made some tiny tiny progress on the frost and pumpkin stitchery. Uh, I showed it some weeks ago. Let's see if I can... It's too light in here. Anyways, <laughs> it's the, the fabric is blue so it's you can hardly see when I have done the blue and white. So. Uh, this is new, and all the white is new, and I have made blue windows before, so not much. It takes a little bit more more time to uh, cross stitch on linen, but I really enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to get more time with this, so it actually will be something you can see on this <laughs> on this frame. It will be really really cute later on at least oh. but I really hope that I will have time for doing the donut box and also have another uh, 
cross stitch box on the way, so I need to get on working. Uh, yeah, now it's stash a lot, I think. I'm looking around so I haven't missed anything, but I don't, I don't think so. So I think that is all of the knitting and crochet and cross stitch. I haven't been sewing anything or spinning, so then I can show you my only yarn stash a lot thing. This is from the lemonade shop. Uh, so the yarn is black with one streak of rainbow. So this is on her mighty sock base. Let's see, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. Uh, and this, the colorway she calls bad day. So I'm really looking forward to make some something nice with this. Probably socks. It's really, really soft, so yeah, I really like the ID, so with it, like a black sock with some streaks of rainbow. And then I have some tiny accessory things from uh, Fripperies and Fireblocks. This is how the lid looks. And uh, if you have ordered the surprise themed uh, rings for August, you must look away uh, because I'm going to show some of them. Uh, the theme for the club uh, was unknown when I ordered it, but I figured I always, uh, you can never get too many. Uh, knitting tools or accessories. Accessories. So it's these tiny uh, rings that are in different colors. So this one is like a pink almost with a yellow bead. And you have some that is blue with a pink with a pink one. And there is green and also silver with some kind of orange bead and also there were several colors but also two little uh, bigger markers so a uh, yellow bead and a little boot and an even bigger marker uh, with uh, a cloth Lobster claw, you say maybe, uh, with a guitar and a microphone. Really, really cool. And I really like how these rings are in different colors. Uh, I, uh, I haven't used more than the big marker so far, uh, but I really like them and they seem durable. Uh, I have accidentally dropped them on the floor, and uh, sometimes the beads in when I've ordered these kinds of rings in other shops before, the ring comes off, and you have to like glue it together and and stuff. But these have been working so far, uh, so I'm probably going to order more rings sometime. You never know. And then I have some fiber which is really really nice look at this ah it's so soft this is for all the harry potter fans out there and for the big harry potter fan in me and uh, this bat uh, with a pretty little tie on it uh, this is from Classy Squid Fiber Company and the colorway is called Swedish Short Snout. So dragon. Oh, it's so pretty. Bats is actually the only, not the only, but one of the 
preparations I haven't been haven't spun yet. So I'm really looking forward to trying. Oh, I have some dirt on here. Yeah. Uh, I have been spinning some raw legs and some just tops. Uh, top that is braided. Uh, I do have some bullseye, bullseye bumps from uh, Loop Fiber Studio that I haven't tried yet, but I have them. And I also. Uh, what do I have else? Yeah, and I have small fussling and stuff that I haven't tried for. What do you call them? Like the small clouds. But I haven't had uh, like a proper bat. So I ordered, when I saw the name and the theme, I couldn't resist, so I ordered this really short snout. Uh, this is probably going to be on my wheel quite soon, I hope. Uh, let's see what the ingredients are. There were quite a lot of things that makes it so soft. Uh, merino, alpaca, mulberry silk, faux cashmere, uh, finister, I'm not sure. Noil, silk noil and angelina. So it's 2.3 ounces of gorgeousness. I can hardly stop touching it. I had it quite fun because when I got the package I like tear the package open and pull out the fiber and snuggle with it and said oh it's so nice and I carefully took the ribbon away and folded it up and said oh isn't it nice and then my fiance took it to his face and snuggled with it and says oh it's really soft. And then he had like fiber in his beard, like sticking out, and I had to pick. I said, Oh, don't take my fiber, don't take my fiber. So, <laughs> but it's really, really soft. So that's really nice. And then I had some, uh, some things that I ordered that I uh, talked about early in the episode that I needed to try out with the baby socks. And that's because I got uh, some of the new Knit Pro Zing, which is aluminum or aluminium, depending on where you live, probably. Uh, I never learned which is the proper, uh, I have heard both, both aluminum and aluminium, but you know what I mean, metal knitting needles. So uh, they do this in the same way as signature needles does. So they have different colors for different sizes. So this is the 2.5 millimeter, uh, the short DPNs. And then here you have uh, the 2.25 short DPNs. So they have this silver tip and then a color with uh, the size uh, the size is printed on there. Can't really see it, but so I try these short ones for my baby socks, and they work really nice. They are light, uh, and I I really like the fact that they they warm up uh, in my hands while I'm knitting. So that's quite nice, and. I see a purpose for me to have some of these for uh, travel knitting. I, I think I, I do prefer my cubics uh, still, uh, but when you're knitting on 2.25s or 2s or something, uh, it's quite scary to travel <laughs> with the tiny, tiny needles. Uh, that if I shove them in the bag, they will break. So I can see a purpose of having aluminum uh, needles for that. So uh, they come in both DPNs and in circulars. circulars. Uh, so I got one with an 80 centimeter uh, cord or whatever you say. So these are colored. Uh, in the same fashion as these. So 2.25. I'm planning to have these for magic looping socks. But I haven't tried uh, the circular one yet, so I have no idea how like how 
the cord and needle attachment will work. So I will try them out and give you more of a review when I have tried it. But so far so good. Uh, I think if you're if you are really dependent on uh, pointy needles, these aren't for you. I actually like a little bit of a blunt tip. Let's see if I can make it focus. These aren't that sharp. Uh, they are sharp enough for knitting socks, but I think if you're knitting like complicated lace and need to do lots of knit togethers and stuff, you probably would like the pointier, sharper needles. I have the problem when I have sharp needles that I will scratch my index finger, so I will get like a long uh, wound <laughs> if I knit for a long time. So I actually prefer blunt needles so I don't hurt myself too bad. But yeah, I will talk more about the circular one when I have tried it, but I have tried the DPNs and they work great and they uh, haven't been breaking or be working badly in any way. And the last thing is quite a huge one. I got a big box, like a really big box with yarn, but I figured Lots easier if I just show you one of each, but I have several. Uh, there's a, a company in Denmark that also have uh, they have uh, an online store in Norway. Because the problem for me is when I order yarn from outside of Norway, uh, the taxes and uh, Oh, I'm not sure what the thing when you, when I bring the things into the country I need to pay uh, pay for them like oh, taxes and fees import importing fees and stuff and the amount uh, is really low so if I order more than one skin of yarn I have to pay like crazy amounts of money uh, but the thing is even though these yarns are from have they have like storage in Denmark? They import it to Norway, so I can order it from the Norwegian side and don't have to pay the fees. Uh, the yarn is probably a little bit more pricey, but I don't have to do all the fussy things with importing. I talked last week about my knitting desire uh, being the port. Uh, sweater for my boyfriend and it actually fell down some Brooklyn tweed shelter in my big package so I have 11 skeins of this uh, the colorway is called cast iron so it's a really 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 dark grey and he said no to the elbow patches so it will just be a dark dark grey but I couldn't let these 11 skeins travel by themselves so I found a lighter grey for myself this is called Soot so it's a little bit more lighter but still on the dark side I think uh, also, also shelter but these I got uh, 17 skeins because I have a pattern in, in mind uh, it's called the row, I think. I didn't write <laughs> what the designer is called, but I will write in the show notes. But it's uh, a beautiful, beautiful uh, cardigan, or would you say? It have no buttons or anything, but it's still like an open cardigan with a lot of uh, braids and stuff. Really, really cozy and beautiful, and I, I really want to have one of those, so I'm planning to knit one in this for me. Maybe you want to see them in comparison. So this is the dark one and this is the light one. I 
really have I'm really in need of a new sweater for me, like a cozy sweater, because I knitted one two years ago uh, in a lovely uh, onion yarn with nettles and wool, and it was a, a really long, like almost to my knees, a long cardigan. Uh, with a leaf pattern on the back and it was in Danish, so I had some really <laughs> hard work with translating and understanding what I was doing. Knitted all the pieces and sewed them together and I loved the sweater. And then it went in the washer on 60 degrees and was this big when it came out. So that's the excuse for needing a new one. Uh, so we will see if I pass on the sweater for my boyfriend or fiance, I should say, or if I should pass on a sweater for myself. This one is very tempting, but I couldn't let these go by themselves. Two greys, they need some color company, so some Brooklyn tweed love also <laughs> followed along. So this is the thinner uh, version. Maybe I should talk about the content in them also, but this is the blue, blue colorway, so it's a dark purple. I haven't decided on a pattern for this, but it will be a cardigan for me. So I got, I don't know, quite a lot of skin, so I had like a big bunch of yarn. But anyway, uh, both of these yarns uh, uh, are from 100% American wool. It's uh, a Targi Columbia sheep uh, breed. So uh, this is a finger weight, and this. Uh, let's see if they say. Do, 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 do. I don't know if this could be maybe. A, yeah, this is a worsted. So the shelter one is a worsted weight, uh, and the loft one is fingering weight. So American Target Columbia Sheep, uh, Woolen Spun. Yes, I need to read on the back side, I'm a lousy podcaster. But anyways, I got loads of these games in the mail. So I was bouncing around with happiness and I want to cast them all on at the same time. I want to have a custom frenzy, but I should not have. So I'm trying to contain myself. Yeah. Uh, in other news, I think I'm at my last segment. Maybe I should I could talk a little bit about my my weekend ahead and what has been happening. Uh, I, in bad news, I should start with that, I broke my ball winder. <laughs> I was crying a little bit. I have been finding Mimi's games and left the ball winder on, uh, I have like a side table uh, that I use and then there's a drawer underneath so I pull out the drawer without thinking because the ball winder was out on the end. So I pulled out the drawer and the ball winder flew in the floor and pieces of plastic and a lot of bad words I shouldn't have used. Uh, so we will see if I can repair it or if I have to get a new one. It was quite sad because uh, it's hard to not be able to wind your pin. But in good news, I had some, uh, some have a new member in my family, so that's why I'm going away this weekend. Uh, I got a baby cousin, uh, so uh, I'm really excited to meet him. Uh, he it will be almost three weeks when I see him this weekend, so I'm traveling all the way to Sweden. To cuddle with this little baby cousin and play with my one-year-old cousin. So that will be this will be really really nice. So I'm traveling with my fiance, but without the dogs for the first time in four years. 
Uh, so I will bring cross-stitch and knitting and I will have a really really good time, I hope. It's always nice to be home with my family, so I'm looking forward to it and baby cousins are the cutest, so uh, I'm really looking forward to play a lot with them or play with uh, the one-year-old and cuddle with the little three-week-year-old baby. So yeah, uh, that's why I'm going away, but just for the weekend. I will be back recording Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. I have no idea which date, so 10 days from now, maybe. So hopefully I will have some more knitting to show you. I hope I will have uh, time to record a little bit in my home where my, my my the place where I grew up because uh, since I'm just home for the weekend we will see if I have time for it uh, but it will be really nice to show you like where I grew up um, because I got some comments that it would be nice and yeah I should just keep going doing whatever I felt like so and then I hope to be able to record uh, some segments like in the town where I live and at the beach uh, close to my house so you can see all the loveliness I, I really think it's fun to see more about where people live I watch so many podcasts and I really think it's nice to see where they live and how things work and that kind of stuff and also I want to thank all of you that is uh, watching and or and or commenting on uh, the Ravelry group or on YouTube. It feels good to know that I'm not just talking to myself, but I can see in the statistics that there are quite a lot of people watching. So I'm I'm really flattered that you take time of your day or your week to watch my little podcast. It warms my heart really much. So yeah, maybe I should call this end for today. I will hopefully see you in about 10 days or so and I hope I will have a lot of knitting stuff to show you. Uh, but until then have a really really nice knitting time and take care of yourself. Bye!